Let's go into the underground, Scotty. Let's get down low to the root zone. I don't know if we give us growers enough attention to the root zone. You don't see it. It's not in front of your face. Let's talk about relationships with pH, microbes, maybe a little nutrient availability, but mainly intrigues me why we always say on the show, you're really inoculating and keeping a lot of microbes active in your soil. Don't worry about pH in, which when I first heard that, I just wanted to be like, BS, man, you're trying to sell me. Yeah, you know, this, uh, the catalyst for this was somebody, and pardon me, I'm losing my voice, but when you ask me to talk microbes, I'm talking microbes. Uh, but somebody was like, hey, microbes don't regulate the pH of the soil or of the root zone. Prove it. And I was like, all right, all right, I got a show. I can prove it. But uh, yeah, turns out they do, dude. And by the way, well, hang one on a second. I think about my roots all the time. I'm not one of them bud lookers. I look at the buds, but I know what's going on up above ground is there's representation of what's going on below ground. Yeah, yeah. And that's just sometimes if it's not seen, you, you forget about it a little bit. I mean, I know just to back up when I grew um, basically sterile, is the opposite. pH was of the utmost importance when I was in Rockwell or Hydro Ton. Yeah, I almost forgot the name of the little clay ball media. I haven't used it in so long. Um, but it was utmost of important. If you got off by a few points, you'd start to see deficiencies because it's you know certain things are only available in a certain range. No, by a few fractions of a point because yeah, yeah. pH is ready. I'm gonna say something I don't understand. Logarithmic, man. No, it just expands out. Like, you know, the difference between a 5-0 and a 6-0 is huge. You know, it's not one point. It's exponential, man. All right. God, I failed right. math. Me and you were talking about that. We're like, we probably would have liked college if we didn't have to take math. Yeah, no, college. I mean, I don't know. Once I got a tutor and I was pushing through, you got that reward. I started to feel like I was getting a reward for getting through it, but I feel you. Hey, man, I got a really easy way to explain. We'll start with bacillus. Bacillus are bacteria, aerobic bacteria. We're aerobic beings, meaning we inhale oxygen, we exhale carbon dioxide. Uh, if you do that underwater, that's how they make uh, carbonated water. They just put an air stone with CO2. It bubbles up and it makes carbonated water. Well, the pH of carbonated water, it makes carbonic acid and it lowers it. I think you can take water that's you know, neutral, put CO2 in it. It'll be down to three by the time it's, you know, by the time it's carbonated. Uh, so it can do that in your soil and it can do that a little with a few microbes or they can multiply like crazy and do that a lot. And so that's, don't forget, they don't have to change this, the entire, the pH of the entire soil. They need to change the pH of where the roots meet the soil. That is that one twentieth of an inch, the rhizosphere. That's where the microbes hang out. And that's where this has to happen. Does this tie into, and I may be way off point here, where the, can't the plant like have tell its root zone hey we want some more of this or we want some more we're running low on this and send out a specific exudates like, yeah through the root zone again i might be totally off point but i believe i was reading about the plant being able to trigger different things to, for, that it needs absolutely these microbes live off you know they need air which is why you need, need a nice aerated soil but then they live off sugar just a really simple carbohydrate and they cannot make that themselves the plant leaves and photosynthesis uh, can photosynthesize and make their that synthesizes or synthesizing sugar. They're using the light and some of the and some of the nutrients and the water, but they're making this sugar. They're going to use it mostly. What are plants are mostly carbohydrate, right? But they're going to take uh, so make nine, take ninety percent of that and use it to make buds and flowers and leaves. Take ten percent of it, maybe fifteen percent of it, pump it back down so that it is able to uh, feed the microbes. And now those microbes are able to take what they want. And it's kind of, it's a symbiotic relationship where the microbes, and it's not all rainbows and lollipops. It's, hey, if you want us to work down here, give us what we want. You know, if, the, if you're like, hey, well, you better keep me healthy up here. If I die, nobody gets what they want. That's what the plant's saying. So they work it out nice. and they work it out through, hey, look, I've got this. So I've got all this ability to change the pH of the carbohydrates that you give us um, or put it this way. Uh, they do this exchange and that's how uh, it, it all reaches a symbiosis, an equilibrium, if you would. And how, I mean, it was hard for me to be convinced because I maintain a pH pen forever just to put it down, 
not use it and rely on, you know, and it's, this isn't going to be a hundred percent of the time in all situations. You can have soil, um, depending on where you've bought your soil. If it's not already like at a good neutral state, depending on what it is, cocoa, I think like Canna comes out at maybe six, six, two, uh, buffered, if you will. But you triggered but, me though, man. You triggered me. You're like, oh, I don't know how I'm going to trust this and put down my man-made pH pen that needs to be calibrated. Yes. Uh, and I, what you're saying, I don't know if I'm going to trust. And then you change the the subject, man. But you don't want to trust <laughs> Mother Nature. You don't want to trust the way plants have been growing for you know hundreds of thousands or millions of years. It, it didn't do this automatically. Uh, we've had the plants have formed, specific plants have formed uh, associations with real specific microbes. And uh, yeah, this is the way plants have been growing forever. They figured out in 18 something, Fritz Harbor figured out how to rip nitrogen from the air using a whole bunch of natural gas and fossil fuels and heat and pressure uh, to make the chemical fertilizers that we're using. But before that, if you wanted plants to grow, you needed to develop a, a symbiotic relationship with the soil and the microbes of your buffer. Is there some microbes that are more, or I don't know, are there some, I mean, I'm familiar with trichoderma, the bacillus, there's definitely a bunch of different bacilluses, which are yeah. bacteria, um, and, but that are more important that regulate pH in the root zone than others. I mean, it's myco mycorrhiza. Do we oh, call that? A, that's a microbe there as well. It is. It, I tell you What's what. What's fungi, just, though? Go ahead. Just because you brought up fungi, I think you said something about trichoderma. It is a trip how some of these things work. And I, I guess you can kind of, you know, humanize it, anthropomorphize it. But the, my, the trichoderma, they will <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, they will just either kill things that make acid or, or let them make the acid. So these organic, these, uh, these microbes that will secrete acid, um, they can either allow those to go and lower the pH or they can stifle them. And some of them can even make their convert, uh, nitrogen or through the nitrogen cycle, uh, convert, uh, the nutrient into ammonia. And ammonia is like an 11, 12, 13 pH. So by either converting things to the ammonia side, and by the way, there's a ton of ammonia in fertilizer. That's mostly what it is. Uh, and then, or, uh, converting acids. So something that secretes humic and fulvic acids. Uh, you can either allow that microbe, if your trichoderma can either allow that microbe to thrive, so it regulates the pH, so that that trichoderma is comfortable, <laughs> or it can say, hey, wait a minute, I don't need any more acids here. Those acid-producing pumps over there, those microbes over there, I'm going to stifle them. I'm going to mobilize oh. them, sir. Is the root zone, like the rhizosphere, is it more like... Is it a party or is it like, you know, kind of like a community work in like L.A., which if you're was, listening, uh, Saturday, Saturday show, we'll be talking about our L.A. trip, by the way. That's why Scotty like, lost his voice. <laughs> it's like the garment district in L.A. That's what it's like. Just tr crazy transactions happening all over the place. You can't fully understand why, but it seems to be working and everyone seems to stay alive. And the idea is that they're thriving. I've been to the garment. I don't, I don't know how the garment district is thriving, sir. Uh, and that's this is all fairly in the you know when you look at the bigger picture, new information to growers. I mean, we have just been when I first started to grow, I knew nothing about microbes. Yeah, totally. You know, like I said, sterile. And the first thing that came to us as growers, I think, was mycorrhizae in the form of like a granular that you could use at transplant. At least for me, I wasn't using any other trichoderma bacteria, yep. any of that stuff. Yeah, the mycorrhizae is that coating. So now the mycorrhizae is a fuzz that uh, coats the roots. And now the mycorrhizae is able to regulate its own pH. They're able to secrete acids. Uh, they're able to immobilize uh, other microbes or other compounds that would normally be lowering the pH. That's kind of a cool one, too. I'm kind of putting you on the spot, but let's say not in summary, but just to comment, I keep coming up with questions. I feel like I'm talking to the guy at the grocery store trying to sell me microbes and I'm the customer. So I like it. So yeah. if I have, you know, let's say you got real growers recharge. If I have a, a product, I'm inoculating um, a blend of microbes in cocoa. What do people use? Cocoa, peat, living soil, living soil guys already got a ton of microbes going on. But I say the more the merrier in any situation with these plants, even yeah. maybe down to rock wool. I don't know if we'll go that far. Would you be like trying to check your pH at all? You're saying at that point, 
if you're doing a weekly inoculation of a microbe, you always keep it on the population. You're good to go. Definitely. Don't even check it. Let's give a quick shout out to this video sponsor, AC Infinity. If you're an indoor grower and you're looking for the highest quality grown gear out there, you got to check out acinfinity.com. Their tents, fans, grow controllers give you total control over your grow environment so you can dial things in exactly how you want them and grow stress free. Go check out all the grow gear at acinfinity.com and use coupon code DUDEGROWS for a great deal. That's acinfinity.com. Coupon code dude grows. All right, let's get back to learning some growth. Definitely. Don't even check it. Because checking the pH of all, you've got this five gallon container, you've got 5% of it where the, of the media that is actually making contact with the root zone. That's where I want to be. I want to be in the rhizosphere, the root sphere, the one twentieth of an inch where those roots and there's micro. I'm sorry, where the roots and the soil meet and make their exchanges. I don't care what the soil pH is at the top of the bucket or anywhere where there's not roots, but right where that exchange is is being made, I need the the soil to hold a bunch of nutrient, and then I need my microbes right there to figure out a way to make a transaction and make that deal happen. Happen. I've done I've done two complete grows now. I'll give you a pat on the back because it's very skeptical of just the grow dots and can of cocoa and recharge. Uh, never checked my pH once. N now I know, know your starting point. I always say that. Am I off the tap? I'm like at a seven, pretty neutral. It's always good just to at least know some starting point if you can, but zero deficiencies, uh, no problems. I, I can't gauge it. Could I have I done a lot better? I can just say I was really happy with the grow. Um, and I love just throwing water down just right off the sink, you know, switches from my well. And uh, it's just easy peasy for growing. Look, my last grow came out great. Like I am psyched to smoke this weed. And uh, man, it was grow dots and recharge <clears throat> and good quality can of cocoa. But using that and by the way, I don't know if we talked about, yeah, we did talk about raising the pH, but these fertilizers are normally fairly high in pH, or at least like ammonium is a lot of what, you know, it's a big component of fertilizer and that's pretty high in pH. So regulating and breaking that down, or even some microbes can make ammonium. They can transfer from ammonium to nitrate and one is way higher in pH and the microbes can regulate that and mobilize that change their forms from, you know, from ammonium to uh, nitrate. And I'm, I'm telling you, it's really neat. If you ever look, pH is called the, what is it? The power of hydrogen and uh, potential, you just of hydrogen. Look, potential of hydrogen. Thank you so much, man. And it is, uh, uh, just, you'll see when you look at the chemical formulas, I'm not a chemist, but you see like H4 plus, that's a lot of hydrogen right there, you know? So that either has to be neutralized or that's going to lower your soil pH. I'll give a grower tip on this. If you are somebody like somebody for me, I'll have if you're using a liquid a nutrient that you add to watering can, I hand water your reservoir um, and you do like a feed feed day. And then the third day, that's when you can do your, you know, mix and recharge or whatever biological you're using only. But some people, I think the word is fertigate. That's when you're using fertilizer in your irrigation uh, sure. every day. Yes. Uh, mix up your nutrients first all in the proper order however and once you have your end blend then you can add you know that's a, so i get like, worried i think like oh if there's fertilizers in there it's going to kill my microbes because they're chemicals but they're in such a dilution after you mix them into your one gal or two gal watering can that there's no like detrimental harm to the microbes correct yeah and being a grower i have that 20 acre commercial bamboo nursery um uh, you don't send people out once to fertilize and then a next, another time to do microbes. Man, when you're talking a hundred acres or a thousand acres, you do yeah. what's called a tank mix, which is you, maybe it's your foley or whatever it is. You mix everything together and then you go out and either spray or irrigate. Uh, so yeah, recharge is tanks, tank mix compatible. Might as well take my real oh. grower shout out here, right, man? Real growers recharge. It's my company. Oh, I'm not wearing the shirt today, but uh, yeah, that's how you can support us. And it sure is a great product. And it does regulate pH at the micro or at the uh, rhizosphere root level, sir. Uh, Realgrowers.com. Coupon code do to help you out over there. Uh, let's yeah. shout out to some DDC. And I want to drop the mic. Oh, mic drop. drop it. 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 Drop it
Thanks, Grambo. Grambo's hanging in there. He's, he, today, guys, we're running a little different system. If Grambo's a little oh, quieter yeah. than usual, you're on, below the weather a little or a lot, hey, maybe. I am here. You know what? It made me think interesting. Remember, we're ch- sitting at, at LA where I got sick and at the Rainbow Room. Remember what was written on the, the building next door that just Mike, Mike, just Mike pointed out? So above as so below. You know, Whoa, he's got to think about some... these plants, healthy I roots, like healthy it. fruits. You know, Grambo's kind of deep. I spent the whole weekend with him, man. He actually, he actually has deep thoughts, man. Ah, I'm just my shallowness. <laughs> we had a great time hanging out. We did. It was team yes. building. All right. Yes. Thank you. All oh, listen. Yes, definitely. Tune into Saturday's show. Listen up. Uh, we do have a wheel. It has been given away. We gave away a HLG 200 R spec over the weekend to our DDC producers. So I wanted to shout out Grandpa. I did put a link if you caught it under the uh, the, the the shout out names there. And this one was to winner was Gumby Gumby Buds uh, and <laughs> Warehouse Kyle. There we go, Gumby Buds Warehouse Kyle. We'll get that right out to you. Guys, if you're not a DDC producer, you're missing out. We're doing giveaways of seeds every week. Once a month, we're doing bigger giveaways. With this more than that, you get to come hang out in the VIP exclusive area. Membership, if you're a grower, membership pays its dividends, right? Pays it right back at 10 a month. Go to realddc.com. You can join up there for free. Realddc forward slash upgrade. That'll get you up into the producer mode, and you can feel great for literally continuing to make this show happen after 10 years now. Uh, How do a smoke break too, Scotty? How What's big up? the buds have to be for you to call them Gumby buds? <laughs> You're so right, Grandpa. Are you too young for Gumby? Do you remember Gumby? I don't even know what was going yeah, on. With that. I, I, I don't know what year. Uh, what, what was, was his, Gumby? What was the horse's name? Po- oh, man, Pokey, like right? Pokey, Pokey. Pokey. man. Pokey, the yeah. only Gumby that wasn't good. I remember was. Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy is Gumby. That was the best. <laughs> yeah. I forgot what the character was. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of that, man, we got to go to uh, the Comedy Works. Uh, we ended up going there. What was that? No, the Comedy oh, Store. Yeah. We went comedy to the Los store, Angeles Comedy Store. We yes. got to see Bobby Lee, Annie Letterman. That was uh, fun, uh, yeah. man. That was, was fun. Really good show. And she yeah. told me why I got sick. She's like, oh, you swam in Malibu? Are you sick? And I was like, I am. And she's like, oh, there's a sewer <laughs> pipe near there. Uh, that is Uh-oh. the best. Uh, that is there is a Uh-oh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> You'll be all right, Graham. But you got the antibiotics, right? The you Malibu flu, right. as I called it. You'll yes. be fine. Hey, let's shout out these producers here. I got Ed Mo Green Jam. Ed Mo, what's been going in Edmonton? There, you tell me if you're not a Canadian in Ed Mo Green Jam and Nemesis. What's up? What and do you think that's all about? about? Wait, what do you think Nemesis is all about? Is he using neem oil all the time? And those are his <laughs> bugs are his nemesis. So neem of is all the, the nemesis. nemesis the he's the most nemesis. This is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you got to wonder about these, man. Oh, I'll take, man. I'll take this noted. one. Go ahead. I actually yes. know what this one means. Nug. A-T-L. Okay. And uh, Eichmann. What'd you say? And... Eichmann. This is the, the the simulation again, I guess. When I uh, put the shows together, I picked these producer names. But I logged into Real DDC wow. and I picked Gumby Buds as one without knowing he was the winner of the HLG. Wow. That's how it rolls. That's how it rolls, Gumby All Buds. Right. Congrats. It's and meant Jerry. To be Gumby. It's over, Johnny. Is that what you guys say? <laughs> no, you, know, you, know, you, know, you know who says it's over, Johnny? Jerry Rizzo. Okay, Jerry Rizzo. Hey, it's Frank. <laughs> it's my buddy Frank, my brother, and I'm Jerry Rizzo. Actually, Frank and Jerry yes. Rizzo, no relation. Okay? <laughs> Guys, we're going to yeah. do a smoke break for you producers only today. Uh, so go sign in. Go over to the producer or smoke break group. Hang out. We have a bunch there already. We're going to do these every week for you. Um, and don't be deterred, man. If you want to check out some of it, we have plenty of free smoke breaks as well. It's free to join realddc.com but let's head on in here i want to check out some dang nugs that we don't show on the show hang out to you can't talk you, you your voice is just gonna we got my voice is trash yeah <laughs> and I'm, I'm i'm over the edibles too start doing edibles man they're too heavy they're too heavy for me yes uh this is in uh last time sorry realddc.com and the vip exclusives is where you can find the smoke break all right guys let's do this
All right, dude. Come on, you want, you want to see what I found in the news? I was scrolling on the airplane. You want to talk about Florida? Come on, let's talk about Florida. My old home state. I've been there for 15 years. I haven't, haven't lived there for 15 years, but uh, I found this from Forbes, and it says Florida medical legalization. No, um, this is a video, and it says inside the battle over cannabis legalization in Florida. Right above that one, Grambo. It's just a, a YouTube video, but what it talks about is and cannabis in Florida is, you know, I mean, they don't even need it. And it's an article talks about cannabis. Today on Forbes, inside yeah. the battle over. <laughs> love that. I love that. Today on I Forbes. I don't mind. Man, anyway, what it's talking about, it says that uh, cannabis is a $2 billion industry right now. And it's going to be up to a $6 billion industry within two years, or it's projected. And they were saying, I think it was truly med, I, the big guys. I can't remember, but it was a few of the big guys. One of them, just one of them, donated $36 million to the what? cause. Yeah, the others donated like two or three. I, I thought it was Wait. true leaf, but uh, yeah. How do you do that? You mean you're giving that to the lobbying group? Like you're to making the lobbying group. Huh? Yes. Yes. And I don't know if you know how that works, but the politicians that need to get elected, listen to those folks over like six pound lobsters in the Cayman Islands. <laughs> I know, <laughs> lobsters I know the size that. of a child or a small woman. So they're voting for full legalization in Florida, which always is my first question. I, what, can I grow my wheat? I, that's what I need to know or else I'm not voting for now, you know what? Don't worry. We'll get to that later. Uh, Florida's Amendment uh, 3, which is supposed to be voted on on 2024, does not currently allow for home grows of cannabis. Uh, it does not include provisions for individuals to cultivate their own plants, which has led to criticism. You want to hear the reason they give? God, man, you're going to love my lawyer. He's such a good lawyer. Uh, one reason cited for the exclusion of homegrown amendment three is Florida's single subject rule, which limits constitutional amendments to only one issue at a time. Advocates for home growing hope to address this in future legislative uh, uh, efforts, potentially following the amendments passage. We'll just get a potentially later. I yeah, heard potentially. And yeah. how long does this take? Don't vote for it, man. That's not cool. Like they're just going to, that's totally a move on their part. Not, not cool. Yeah. I'm sure med men will lobby and get, or whatever it was truly, they'll give another $36 million once it's passed to make another amendment to help home grow. Positive, right? I mean, they see there's definitely, I mean, the, the black market home grow. I mean, that there's a lot that takes, I don't know what percentage I'll just say maybe 20%. I don't know. We've covered it on another show when you can home grow this plant gives and you succeed, you could have one room in your house growing for yep. like 10 of your friends and you not even uh, one room, so, a two by four tent. And you, you know, you get a, <laughs> I don't smoke that much weed. I don't know if you've seen the size of a bowl, but it's hard to smoke a quarter pound. All right. Yeah. Ah, All right. Enough, Graham. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like uh, I got a, a a quote here. DeSantis. That's the governor of Florida. DeSantis. Yes. Yes. Ronnie. So, I call him Ronnie. Ronnie was at a church in Tallahassee, and he told oh, about two hundred people. Hang on. I went to school in Tallahassee. That's church country. You know, that's the legit deep South. There, you wanna make moves. You got to get to the church. Yes. Yeah, so he was at the church and he he was preaching. He said, hey, Amendment 3 was a ploy by one Florida marijuana company to create a drug cartel backed by the state constitution. Hmm. Ooh, that I sounds mean, cool. If I was going <laughs> to get a drug cartel, I'd probably get it backed by the constitution. It's kind of cool. Ah, just yeah, it's in, it's interesting. It's a it's a political year here. We'll be we're not usually to get diving into uh, too much politics. I did read, um, and, you know, again, there's no uh, when a politician saying something and I'm telling you about it, it doesn't mean I'm like, yeah, I totally believe it. Go for no. it. There's a lot of people that just want to go to the dispo and get weed or not have to worry about going to jail when they get pulled over. They don't really care about growers rights. And this thing's going to pass. I here's a Florida marijuana legalization bid headed to victory polls suggest, and I'm happy for it. 
man, I don't have to wait for a home grow. Let it be legal. Let it be to where they go. Hey, man, your car is getting impounded, but here's your medicine back. And then let them go and start kicking doors down. You really think I got to worry about having a small grow room? If weed is legal, you can buy it at the store. Do you think the cops are going to come kick my door in and then a DA, DA is going to prosecute me? No, man. That's I always, happen. yes. I, I always ask people, and I did this when we were hanging in Cali, and somebody from Illinois was complaining about the plant count. And I get it. If it's not fair, you should be an advocate. But I said, what happens if you go over it? And they're like, I think it's like a, a fine or something. Like, right. know what, yeah, like know what it's going to, some states can be more serious, I believe. But yeah, look into what you might or might not happen to you. I hear you there, but it's still nice. There's so many people that don't grow. They're the, the, the 100% rule followers. And I hate for those people to not have the opportunity to grow because of a law that says you can't. Got to go to the dispo. Yeah, in South Florida, you're going to be able to grow, whether they say it or not. You can set up a four by eight tent or a two by four tent and you're going you're gonna to be able to grow. And there's no reason that the cops are going to keep your door in. It costs a lot of money for that. And those cops have to pay the bills at the end of the month. And so they're going to go kick in something where there's a bunch of cash or you know, something where they can, uh, yeah, where, where they can uh, turn a profit on that bust. It is a business. They got to pay the bills over there. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Um, it's i'm so on the fence on that one because like you're right it's good for people to not get in trouble but it sucks you can't grow and i don't it's gonna be years i mean it's not like it's gonna come right back around here we can vote on this right away again why do you need to vote on it you know it's still illegal to kiss your wife on sunday in massachusetts but they just stopped enforcing it in the 1700s that's what it was (laughs) they just stopped enforcing it yeah, there's all this one of those like that. It depends on how they play it. We've seen it before. They might want to make an example of a few people and then put it in the news. Good Home luck. Business. Good luck. Go try to make yeah, an example of somebody. Somebody that's growing uh, twelve plants in their bedroom. They're gonna to make up some. If it's not medical, they're gonna make up something medical. They're gonna get a lawyer. The lawyer's gonna bring in, uh, you know, uh, some medical defense, and then they're gonna be embarrassed. The cop is gonna be embarrassed. The DA is gonna be embarrassed. Because they're going to try to select a jury for this trial, which you uh, you have a right to a jury trial. I'm sorry, I'm yeah. talking an American dude. And the jury <laughs> is going to say, "Are you kidding me? You wasted my time for this for a guy that had some egg, some weed he was growing in his bedroom when you can go buy it in the store. You've legalized it there. There's no way they're going to be prosecuting unless you're doing it for money, and then probably the IRS will come after you." Well, oh, I feel you. Yeah, that one is definitely uh, you don't want the IRS coming after you. Uh, I will shoot a shout out here, man. Uh, the shout out is to you guys listening. Uh, it helps to subscribe to this show. If you're digging it, give it a thumbs up, please share it in the cannabis business, man. Sometimes it's hard for your show to be shared and to get into new listeners and try and help new growers. That's a huge thing you can do. And one thing I don't tell people enough, Scott, is we actually have merch dudegrows.com forward slash shop. I pulled a fast one on your grandma. No big deal. Um, but at dudegrows.com forward slash shop, you can check out all of our merch and we're going to be adding some more and don't forget, which we have a grow journal, rolling tray, some hoodies, uh, four different versions of a hat and you DDC producers log in and go check on your exclusives. You can see the coupon codes there. You get, I think 20, 25% off merch. So that's what I got. Let's check some. Hang on, man. I think we need a, I think we need a spray paint, not turf shirt. No. <laughs> yeah, cool one. Yeah, get Come this. on. I I know a guy to get some one of those. We'll get a shout out to Dankweed Tees and uh, yeah, we'll yeah, excellent. Uh, all right, comments, man. This is you hung out with Doctor Bruce Bugby, which was interesting. I'll get it you. was interesting, <laughs> right? I tried to make that guy smile, and no <laughs> chance. He is immune to jokes, uh, but really nice guy. And I tell you what, though, I. Went in with a real grower's attitude about learning about this stuff and what I know about UV and, you know, that kind of stuff. And man, he poo pooed on a lot of that where he was just like, look, our experiments talk about the par range. There's a little bit further of a par range, but he's uh, no, actually the par range. What is it? 400, 700. It's like, that's where the photosynthesis is driven. That's where the action happens. 
And I just know way too many people that are using ultraviolet UV lights to increase their uh, secondary metabolites. So that's where I'm thinking, man. It's if you Google PBAR, it's a photobiological active range. Uh, that's all the stuff. And, and PAR is the photosynthetic active range. Photosynthesis is about building plant material. Photobiological includes things, you know, terpene production, cannabinoid production. Uh, yet the Grambo. Grambo, you're all right, man. See that? It's 280 to 800, not 500 to 700. Or what is it? What is the... Uh, 300 to seven, 400 to 700 to normal is. But uh, can you expand that, Grambo, really quick? Yeah, let me, P-bar? Let's check it out. It's interesting. It's just got two tails on the end. P bar. Uh, yep. Yeah, anyway, it includes the uh, UV and it includes the far red. So it just extends the blue out and the red out. And then, okay, sorry, I got sidetracked, but Thunders777 says, until the scientists smoke the herb grown with and without UV, they don't know jack about UV and high-grade herb. I'm going to agree with that. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, I don't want to go against Dr. Bugby, but we got to get him high. (laughs) Another one here from Brian Drake, 6660. That's how I look at it. I don't want to get evil. Uh, it says, <laughs> I grow outdoor. I thought we were trying to go green. I prefer natural light. It costs nothing. I would think the average rock grower would not want to spend thousands to grow indoor. I get, I do get some rot from rains. I blame the breeding. Nice. Uh, you know, sometimes you just can't help outdoor. You're not in charge like you are indoor as much. It says, decades ago, I uh, ran a few plants for a few years. Even with heavy, frequent rains, bud rot was never an issue. All right. Pretty interesting. I mean, the sun is the cheapest way to grow. It's not allowed everywhere to grow no. outside. And the tip on this as a grower, if you do decide to grow outside and you can create even like a lean to whatever you need to do to keep rain off your flowers, uh, some greenhouse poly, uh, those polycarbonate panels from Home Depot is why I made a little shack out of bamboo and uh, yeah. zip ties and hose clamps. It, it helps a ton if you can have a little uh, help there with the rain. Man, I'm thinking about Bectopia, Sunny and Bectopia, good friend of the show, sent me some pictures of her greenhouse, ash all over it. You know, she's got fires, wildfires are are a real thing, and she just has ash. Oh, my God. Thank God she has a greenhouse or her harvest would be ruined. (laughs) Yeah, that is Ah, a save. That's funny. 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 (laughs) You (laughs) Hey, it's a lappy show, you know, I'm token and it's just usually, <laughs> although I have gotten busted before, like, that's not funny at all, dude. Anyway, <laughs> like someone gets hurt and when someone gets hurt, but you know, they're okay. You go, Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh you're not. All right. <laughs> oh, yeah. ah, you you're know. nuts. You're going to hurt tomorrow. Man. Is safe. Yeah, she was okay. So. That, is a, that is a huge save. I've read very, very sad stories about fires and smoke. Just you can't really be like, oh, these, this, this, this strain has just got the smoke terps, bro. It's going to be so good. Right. Not cool. Uh, smoke terps. I'll take uh, at multiple. This is a cool clone uh, question here. At multiple technologies. Okay. Please cover clone to plant a bull plant, clone to plantable plant. When's it ready to sure. plant? I have clones I took three weeks ago. They have roots but very little growth. When should I be treating her like a plant and not like a baby? Now, I mean, once you see roots, mm-hmm. that's when you can start. I'm bringing in uh, light nutrient. I don't want to put it right at quarter strength. I'm not going to feed it full. Whatever your nutrition program is, if you're using a bottle, <laughs> I start to you know just slowly bring it up. And once you get more sets of leaves, you definitely, and that's where you can transplant as well. Once you see roots, man, you're good. I'm telling you, it's time to pimp your grow and save money doing it. Go to dudegrows.com forward slash pros, or you have all the coupon codes listed out for great pros such as Lost Coast Plant Therapy, AC Infinity, Seeds Here Now, Horticulture Lighting Group. The list goes on. Dudegrows.com forward slash pros. Vetted DGC gear for your grow. Check it out. Man, you're good. Man, once you see a little bit of roots in the clone dome, you start to open the the lid a little bit, get them a little bit used to uh, being outside that clone dome, and then they go right into, 
head sale going up. <laughs> they go right into a solo cup. I use grow dots. So I put a teaspoon, five grams of grow dots in there. Uh, and then I'll take that and just slow, put it under maybe 200, actually right under the same light that they were cloned at. And then just slowly move them out into my veg area where it's 250 PPFD. I call those teens. And then they go out in the veg two to three weeks later as fully rooted out solo cups. I like you mentioned a tip on that. You can take your clone dome too. So your clone dome environment, like Scott was mentioning, is way different typically than your humidity and temp in your mm. grow environment. So I take once I start to see a few roots, because you can keep plants in those in rooting cubes for a bit. They can root out. You don't want to let them get like root bound by any means. Once you see a few roots, I will put that dome in my grow tent down low, down low from the light. You definitely don't want intense light on them. You got to gradually, if you have an LED with a knob, bring them up. Um, but then if I'm home, like 50% of that day, I'm going up there and letting them live without the dome. But then I'm putting it back on, just kind of get them a little slowly acclimated, just where you put them in that totally different environment. So that question though, multiple technologies. Yes. Vents you can use too. You know, they, uh, most of the clone domes have vents. You can just slowly open them up and I let them, I don't, I don't wait just till they get a few roots. I really don't wait an extra day or two after they get their first root. So they are blowing up, popping out with roots. And then that's when I put them in the solo cup with uh, the five grams of grow dots and man, it's easy. You want them to, if you're in a timed situation where you're not ready for them yet, or they're starting to root, if you keep on them, they can live in those rooters for you know a bit of time, and they, they they'll be all right, and they can stay healthy if you start feeding them, you keep them moist. Not ideal, I said. If you have to, you're like, <laughs> once you see roots, if you can transplant right away. But why not um, just throw them in a solo cup? Even if you cut the solo cup in half or something, if you've got some kind of height issues, or Ooh, just that's a good, that's a good tip. Totally, just keep them in a solo cup. It's easy. What tool do we use to cut a solo cup in half? I don't know. It sounds Weird, tricky. Man. Oh, we use scissors, sir. Scissors, right here. Scissor. Scissors. I don't have Is those. Is there an S on the end or not? Yes, I think so. I go yes. plural with those. So there's two yeah. sides. All right, let's do some news here. There's always news. We've been doing this for 10 years, and there's always weed news. I'm glad we decided to cover the marijuana aspect of life. Uh, this yes. is out of four. Marijuana users had better... COVID-19 outcomes, new study shows. Interesting. Tell me about it. I, this was interesting, in my opinion. It talked about how people who use cannabis have lower rates of severe COVID-19 infections and were less likely, likely <coughs> excuse me, to experience serious health outcomes, such as intubation or death, according to new published research. Uh, looks like it was published last week. In the journal Cannabis and Cannabinoid Research. We have our own journals, huh? Let me try this one to see if I can sound really good. It says the beneficial effect <laughs> of cannabis use may be attributed to its immuno, immunomodulatory effects. Immuno, immunomodulatory. I think no, I got modulatory. <laughs> it means it can modulate Thank you. things. Yeah, it can. Uh, so you can your immune system can modulate, I guess, the introduction of viruses better. Um, yeah, it, it, I, I just think it's it's uh, may, no, I can't say that. I was going to say maybe in general, is there any relation or correlation to people that use cannabis are healthier to begin with? But I've, I think I've seen some pretty unhealthy ah, cannabis users. What do you no. think? The data shows that 28.2% of cannabis users experienced a serious COVID-19 infection compared with 46% of non-users. Uh, oh, the mortality rate good. for cannabis users was 5.1% uh, in and verse. No, no, no. Hang on a second. 5.1% in non-cannabis users versus 2.8% in cannabis users. That's half. That is double uh, the, what would that be? Double the mortality rate from people that didn't use cannabis. Well, intubation rates were 9.7 compared to 7.1. Uh, shorter hospital stays, eh, just interesting stuff. I don't well, know. I was about to say, when they get to the numbers, like people that had used cannabis stayed in the hospital for 6.4 days versus seven days. For, I'm like, oh, we're getting too close here. <laughs> yeah, but that was the last one. And you noticed I left out the actual statistics on that one. Mm, I should be a lobbyist, bro. That's how it's done. Science fictions, baby. It's too late, Scotty. He could be a good lobbyist. 
Nah, you have to show up on time and stuff and leave the house. Not that easy, bro. All right, what else do you find? We have a uh, another version of CRISPR coming. Is that what I said? <laughs> We're on like V4, V5? No, this is new. I mean, this is, yeah, they have CRISPR. What I'm talking about is gene editing. You know, okay. what our cannabis growers are doing or what breeders are doing rather is they're naturally uh, combining genes. So I guess you'd be editing some out at that point. You're trying to breed some genetic, some traits out and breed some in. Uh, they're doing this naturally by, you know, by gen- you know, by breeding, uh, you know, male and female plants, pollination, all that stuff. You might be able to just go and be like, Hey, look, I love this plant, but I don't like that. It has a powdery mildew, a susceptible to powdery mildew. This one is just bulletproof. I'm going to cut it out here and I'm going to insert the DNA from this one there. And CRISPR, like that was the promise of it. And it's neat, but there was a couple things that you would have to use, a couple components that you would have to use, uh, that you, that you could get errors and the more steps, the more potential for errors. And they cut out a bunch of steps. It's called seek RNA. Seek RNA can precisely cleave the target site and insert the new DNA sequence in without using any of the other proteins, uh, any of the other proteins that they had to use with CRISPR. So this allows for much cleaner editing tool with higher accuracy and fewer errors. That's hardcore. And so this has got to be coming to cannabis sometime. You're going to have gene modified cannabis. I'm good. Can't take it either. I'm kind of look, I like Grambo's face on it there. It's like kind of like some things that come like this. I'm ignorant to it. So I don't know how to feel. Well, at any time you're scared of something like, oh man, this CRISPR thing, it's going to be crazy. It's go, oh yeah, yeah. That's, that's la- so last year. CRISPR, it's way better now. Ah, no. see, see, Yeah. At least I was good. scared of it. It sounds dangerous. I was scared of the internet. Why? I'm scared of colloidal silver. Okay, man. Right yeah, once CRISPR can bring bring me a plant, like I said, I could do weed. Uh, I want ghost peppers and raspberries, all from the same rootstock, uh, really? all the same plant. I'm in. Really? <laughs> no, it just no. sounds cool. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I just kind of cover was scary. <laughs> kind of just something that uh, maybe to be on the lookout for. I keep on waiting for this to show up in cannabis. That, that's kind of where I'm at. My next one is just a title. You almost just have to read the title. This is out of uh, shout out to marijuanamoment.net. U.S. marijuana consumers have spent more than $4.1 billion wow. on free rolls in the past year and a half, industry report sounds. Is that possible? That is, is but that is a nascent <laughs> industry. That is a, a brand new industry where, what do you know? I know that I can go and for five bucks, I can get a pre-roll joint and you know, I can smoke, maybe even smoke you know, t- in two sessions and it gets me high. As that starts you know, getting, you know, people start getting more and more sophisticated, they are going to want to have different products. So I think it's just because the industry is so new. Well. Go ahead, Grandma. I was just thinking, you know how many pre-rolls it takes to sell to get to four billion? <laughs> like that's so many pre-rolls. I wish they had a number on how many. Well, yeah, I well, know we hate can... pre-rolls, but that's neat. <laughs> four billion. Wouldn't there have to be four hundred million pre-rolls at ten thousand or ten dollars a right. joint? Yeah, if we have four hundred million there. Be your answer, yeah. The that's, um, the untrained that's one for every man, woman, and child in America. <laughs> It's true. It's true. The un- awesome. the untrained astronaut was at our hey. event and, and shout out shout uh, out, uh again, shout which check the Saturday show. But I somebody handed me a joint, I think it was platinum kush, and I was like, What is this? What is this? And this one tastes freaking awesome. And sure enough, I went, Oh, you bought and it was like low twenties, like with tax, like twenty something dollars for that one joint. So that's not always the case for a pre roll, but it's probably the higher end pre roll, if you will. But yeah, I I I, I see it. It's a lot of money, man. 20 bucks a joint. Some things are bought on that precedence, though. You see, it's all over the place, Scott. You need to have the dude, I just bought this joint for 40 bucks. It's going to be sweet. Like, you're the cool guy. You know what I mean? Right. (laughs) Could be. Could be, sir. Uh, 
Hey, hey, I hope you guys had a good show. Comment, like, subscribe, and share this show. Go over to realdgc.com and join our community of growers. It's free. Check it out. And, uh, man, what else you got, Scotty? I'm just going to say stay higher. Take her easy.